Starship's Super Heavy booster has undergone its first ever ground test. Dragon 22 disembarks the space station. The stage is being set for this month's Vandenberg launch. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Booster 3, now freestanding on test pad A, underwent a quick ambient test on Thursday, the first of a series of ground tests it will be subjected to as SpaceX engineers gather data that will be used for the benefit of the next Super Heavy booster, which will be the first to launch. A cryo test is most likely next and could happen as early as today, Friday. A few more Raptor engines for Booster 4 arrived at Starbase this week, some with the label RB, which stands for Raptor Boost, which means nothing more than these will be installed on the outer ring at a fixed angle, but can throttle like the others. All Raptors on Starship and the Super Heavy booster are the same, fixed or gimbling, and aim to produce about 230 tons of thrust, with the exception being the vacuum variant on the upper stage Starship, although it's to be determined as to whether SpaceX will commonize the two variants by tightening the throat of the Raptor vac to give it more specific impulse. And Elon wrote that they will be adding one additional engine to the booster, bringing the tally up to 33, and possibly three more vacuum engines to Starship. For a total of nine engines, three center gimbling engines, and then six, this only shows three, but six outer vacuum engines. Which would bring the final count of the entire rocket system up to 42 engines. Which happens to be the answer to the ultimate question, how many giant flamethrowers does it take to satisfy the Elon? 42? Who says there is a staggeringly insane amount of work to do between now and getting to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship will be used for a variety of purposes. A different ship variant will be dedicated to building a moon colony, a Mars colony, deploying spacecraft, eating space junk food, deep space travel, refueling other starships. And there's even consideration going on behind the scenes to turn Starship itself into a giant telescope 10 times more powerful than Hubble. But anyway, back to Starbase, Texas. Hydraulic rams have been installed in the empty test stand B in anticipation for future thrust tests. My guess is SN20 which is back to being the center of attention for the construction crews. As it currently stands, it will be the ship to fly upon Booster 4 in the near future. The launch and integration tower that will aid in getting the mission off the ground is just about fully stacked itself. Its final eighth segment has been constructed and awaits transport. Moving on to other SpaceX news, after several days of weather delays, the Cargo Dragon capsule fulfilling the CRS-22 mission undocked from the space station on Thursday morning and is currently making its journey back to Earth. It's scheduled to deploy chutes bra and splash down in the Gulf on Saturday night off the coast of Florida. We're still expecting a Starlink launch from Vandenberg later this month, although no Pacific date is on the books yet. The supporting drone ship, of course I still love you, has completed its trip to the west coast and was removed from the back of the Mighty Servant this week. We're there! <laughs> And just like clockwork, the new drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, was tugged away from the dock today for what is assumed to be sea trials, as it prepares to head for the Cape to fill the gap of course I still love you left behind. And today's derp of the day is a California driver who mounted a Starlink user terminal to the hood of his car and was therefore promptly cited by the state highway patrol. The man said he did so because he works out of his car and when asked by the officer if it blocks his view, the man simply replied, only when I make right turns. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA's Mars rover, Perseverance, recently ran a sample tube through an inspection as a dry run for its first rock core collection, and has begun using a powerful auto navigation system called AutoNav that makes 3D maps of the terrain ahead, identifies the hazards, and plans a route around any obstacles so nobody back here on Earth has to do anything, but will still get a paycheck. However, the rover will still face limitations on the places it can drive to, so that's where its Martian helicopter sidekick, Ingenuity, comes into play. To date, this little guy has completed nine flights over the red planet's surface, the previous one lasting 166 seconds and flying as fast as 16 feet per second. And now that Perseverance is moving on, Ingenuity will be used to fly to nearby locations the rover can't travel to due to rocky terrain. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for stopping by, and thank you members for supporting the show. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.